A few videos back, I did a couple of videos about ashwagandha. If you missed those, head over here. In those videos, I mentioned cortisol quite a few times because a lot of people take ashwagandha to help them with stress reduction. And cortisol is a very important hormone to know about. It controls a lot of things about your body. And so today, that's what we're focusing on. Now, many people know of this hormone as the stress hormone, but there is actually a lot more to it. It's also involved in metabolism and energy levels, the immune system, it impacts on your blood sugar and controls when you want to sleep and wake up. Hormones are something that is discussed a lot in the health and wellness space as well. Everyone talks about making sure your hormones are in balance and cortisol is the one you definitely wanna make sure is balanced because it causes many problems if it's too high or too low, which you are about to find out. So let's just get into it. Hey everyone, it's Carmony from Long Game Health. Welcome back to the channel. So what is cortisol? Well, it's a hormone, but more specifically, it is a steroid hormone, which means it looks something like this. Now, all steroids have this structure in common and cholesterol is actually needed to create this structure, which means that overall, steroid hormones are quite fatty, which is good because this means they can easily pass through and enter the cells all around your body and interact directly with your DNA, which is how they give their many, many effects. Now, cortisol is made by what is called the adrenal glands. And these are small glands that are located on top of each kidney. But how cortisol is made and released into the bloodstream is not as simple as you might think because it's all controlled by your brain. There is a region of the brain called the hypothalamus. And when you run into something that stresses you out, this part of the brain will start the process that eventually leads to those adrenal glands releasing cortisol into your blood. It's a very complicated operation, but all you need to know at this stage is that your brain sends a message to the adrenal glands and then bam, we have cortisol. Now, let's talk about this stress response for a little bit. Why is cortisol known as the stress hormone? Well, when you are stressed, it is cortisol that helps your body adapt and cope to the situation. And it does this by impacting on a few systems in the body. As I said before, stress will trigger your brain to start the process of making cortisol and then releasing it into the blood. From there, a few things will actually happen. Because you are in a stressful situation, you will need energy. So cortisol will trigger the breakdown of the storage form of glucose, which is glycogen, so that glucose is available to be used for energy. Now cortisol also leads to something called gluconeogenesis, which is a fancy word, but all it means is that your body will make its own glucose using non-carbohydrate sources, such as amino acids. Now something to note here is that your muscles have a lot of amino acids in them. So one thing that can happen from this is muscle breakdown. Now another way to make sure that you have enough energy for a stressful situation is to slow some other processes down in the body that you probably won't be needing for a little bit. So cortisol will suppress or slow down things like digestion. You may have noticed that you don't feel hungry when you are stressed. And that is because the digestive system just slows right down. You may recall the flight or fight response from high school science class, but here is a reminder. Cortisol is the hormone which is behind this response, which is why it's called the stress hormone. And so it leads to all these things happening. And from what I've said before, we can see it clearly is a useful hormone. We need it to help us in some difficult situations. For example, if you have a very important presentation for your work, your cortisol levels will probably go up because it's a stressful situation. But the issue with cortisol actually appears when it's always high. Long-term stress or even anxiety will lead to cortisol levels remaining high. And this is when your health starts to be at risk because cortisol only has a benefit when it's around for a short period of time. It's here for a good time, not a long time. And there are a few things that lead to cortisol levels being consistently high. And the main one is, you guessed it, chronic stress. Honestly, with the state of the world being what it is at the moment with multiple wars going on and the cost of living becoming ridiculously high, it's not hard to be in a state of stress all the time, but unfortunately, this is what leads to high cortisol levels. If you are constantly exposed to stress, 
whether that be work-related, financial, relationships, whatever it is, this will keep your body stuck in the fight or flight mode. And remember, I said that that was only meant to be for a short period of time, but a lot of us today are stuck in this state constantly or for long periods of time, and this will lead to cortisol staying elevated. And two other things that lead to higher cortisol are poor sleep and a diet high in processed foods, sugary drinks, and caffeine. And I don't know about you, but both of these things tend to go hand in hand with stress. So this is all just a perfect situation for cortisol levels to be consistently staying high. Lack of physical activity, excessive alcohol consumption, and smoking also can all contribute to elevated cortisol levels. So by now, hopefully you can see if there are things that might be going on in your own personal life that are potentially causing your cortisol levels to stay high. But there are some symptoms that may appear if your cortisol levels may be staying too high. And here is a list. As you can see, we have physical symptoms, but also more mental related symptoms as well, like difficulty concentrating. Now, difficulty sleeping is a common one because cortisol is involved in the circadian rhythm, which is essentially your body's internal clock. This rhythm controls when you wake up and also at what time during the day certain hormones are released into your blood. And if your circadian rhythm is working correctly, your cortisol levels will look like this throughout the day. It's highest when you wake up, and then it goes down gradually. Now I will be doing a video on the circadian rhythm next month because it's a big topic, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. Now, of course, having these symptoms doesn't mean it's definitely all caused by elevated cortisol levels because there are a lot of things that can cause weight gain, headaches, and pretty much all of these, but I am just offering one potential cause. These symptoms are more short-term things though. So this is more if your cortisol is elevated for a few weeks or months, but if your cortisol levels are elevated for a long period of time, such as a year or longer, then we start to run into some chronic issues. The risk of getting metabolic syndrome increases, and I have done a video on metabolic syndrome, but it's essentially a group of conditions existing at the same time in your body. And these are high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and cholesterol, all of which will increase the risk of heart disease. Chronic elevated cortisol also weakens your immune system, so you become more at risk of infections, and it may take longer to recover from infections if they happen. And one thing that I only found out through researching for this video was that elevated cortisol impacts on your bone health. It leads to bone loss because it slows down the cells in your body that rebuild your bones and also can reduce calcium absorption. So as you can see, the list of things that can go wrong when cortisol levels stay high is quite large. And if you're watching this and can find yourself relating to these issues that I am talking about, then it could be that your body is in a constant state of fight or flight and your cortisol levels are staying too high. So what can you do? The answer isn't complicated. It's just trying to reduce the chronic stress. And sometimes though, that's just unavoidable if it's work related or things that are happening in your life. But trying to make those small changes whether it be to the amount of physical activity you are getting or the food you are eating or the amount of sleep you, will, you are getting will help in the long run. Remember, we wanna make the small changes that we can sustain for long periods of time. And when it comes to getting your cortisol levels back on track, this couldn't be more true. So I hope this video gave you a bit more information about cortisol and has helped you understand what we need it for, but also what can go wrong when we have too much. As usual, if there's anything you want more information on, just leave a comment. If you learned something or just enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I put out a new video every Friday to help educate you about health in some way. I'll see you next week. And until then, as always, keep playing the long game.